Hi, welcome. Baldur's Gate 3 is here, and in this video I'm going to give you the essential tips and tricks along with the basics that you should know before jumping into the game. This is especially friendly for newcomers, but I'm sure that even if you've been playing for a while, there's something here that you're gonna find out or remember. This video will be focusing on the gameplay side. The most important decision that you need to make is what character you're going to play as, but I've got a video up in the card right here talking about that. So let's get into it. In Baldur's Gate 3, the name of the game is flexibility and creativity. There is no right answer to most problems. You are going to decide who you are and play out your fantasy, be that with combat or through role-playing and the narrative decisions through the skill checks that you go for and all role-playing as the character that you decide to be. This means that the game benefits from being played slowly, immersing yourself into the world and enjoying the act of talking to everybody, paying attention, collecting information, and then using that to your advantage when making your different decisions, be that maybe engaging in combat or finding a way around it as the simplest, most basic example. However, at any point during all of that, you might encounter yourself with a negative role. So maybe you are trying to get through a skill check and you fail it. This is why it's very important that you remember to save. Save a lot, save often, so that if you reach a conclusion that you think isn't good for you, that you just don't want in your story and you prefer to roll back and try again, you have that save option there. However, if you did forget to save, don't worry, it's not all lost, because you can re-roll something as long as you have the inspiration for it. Inspiration is let's say an additional currency that you obtain by completing feats. These feats will be logical to your background. So for example, if you pick soldier as your background and you finish a combat encounter where you eliminate 10 enemies, then you will obtain an inspiration point from that feat along with experience. They can come from combat or from story decisions that you take, but the point is, you can use these to re-roll. You can never have more than four inspiration points, so you can still collect more than four, but you can't have more than four banked. You'll still get the experience for additional ones, but with that maximum of four, the idea is to incentivize that you use them to re-roll some of those outcomes. But really, make sure to save. It's very important that you understand both spells and cantrips along with actions and bonus actions. In Baldur's Gate 3, all of your characters, when it is their turn, have three things that they can do. They can move, they can do a basic action, and they can do a bonus action. That is all on one side and is completely independent from understanding spells and cantrips. Spells require a spell slot, and you want to think of spell slots, these little blue squares, as a currency. You only have a certain number of spell slots, and when you use a spell, you consume a spell slot. You can have whatever number of spells memorized, so in other words, available for you to use, and that changes depending on your class, but you only have a number of uses of them until you run out of spell slots. This is different from cantrips, which are spells that you innately know, and they do not require a spell slot to use. So in other words, you can use them however many times you like, and specifically, because there is no mana system in Baldur's Gate, you can literally use them every turn, and if you're thinking about playing a Warlock or having Will in your party, get used to casting Eldritch Blast basically every turn forever. Now all of your actions and your spells or cantrips can be classified as an action or a bonus action. It depends on what that skill is. Actions are going to be the bigger, more important ones that you make in every turn, with bonus actions being anything from casting out a heal, or a smaller spell, or a buff, or a debuff, or just jumping or hiding during combat. One of the most valuable things that you should remember to do in Baldur's Gate 3 is to always use everything that you can on every turn of a character. You don't gain anything by not taking a bonus action. And because aside from spell slots, you have a lot of cantrips and a lot of actions and abilities that do not require any resource or maybe are on a low cooldown, you almost never lose anything for just throwing something out there. 
Sure, sometimes it's better to not do anything, but often you'll find that you have something that you can do to spend that bonus action or that action on. Get into the habit of shoving enemies right off the bat and throwing them off cliffs if you can, or on constantly buffing yourself or your allies if you are playing a class that as a bonus action has a buff, or a debuff on whatever enemy you can. Just don't forget to always spend everything you have because again, there's no benefit to not doing it. Speaking of taking advantage of everything, it's good to plan ahead, and dashing is one of the most useful actions in the game. If you know that during your next turn, all that you're going to do is movement-based, and you are not going to reach whatever target you want to, or reach a position where you're going to do the action that you're looking to do, it's better to dash and have all of that extra movement to play around with, and it still allows you to keep a bonus action. So, sometimes a turn that looks like you can't do anything because you don't have a primary action to do can be changed by simply dashing, increasing your movement range, and then executing a bonus action on something. So many of your abilities and your spell slots, for example, will have cooldowns or will be limited to single uses. So to give an easier, simpler example, once you spend a spell slot, you won't get it back. That's it. That's the total number that you have available to use until you short rest or long rest. The point is a lot of what you do in Baldur's Gate 3 is dependent on you short resting or long resting. So take note of which abilities you use the most and which are the most important, and if they require a long rest or a short rest for you to be able to use them again. As a baseline, you can take two short rests after every long rest that you take. So long rests refresh your short rests. Many things recover with short rests, along with giving you back some HP. But a lot of things like your spell slots will not recover unless you take a long rest. To take long rests and you know head back to camp to do so, you're going to need camp supplies. Camp supplies can be anything. It can be random food that you find or liquor or anything. So to make sure that you have enough things, a great habit to have is to look through every single box, crate and barrel you find and just start looting those potatoes, those apples and those fish that definitely look like they should be rotten by now. All of that counts as camp supplies, as you can see when you highlight them. It's going to cost you 40 camp supplies to take a long rest, but having a nice plentiful amount of camp supplies means that you can consistently long rest after almost every encounter if you want to be overly sure, and you will always be in tip-top shape with everything available to you before going into combat. Speaking of camp, Camp is not only where you go to take long rests, it is also a space in the void. It's this location that you can travel to whenever you want, and, for example, the companions that you don't have with you actively in your party will always be at camp for you to talk to them. And as the game progresses, other characters will show up in camp or will travel there, settle down there, and they will have other mechanics to unlock and for you to play with. So keep that in mind, maybe it's a good idea to check back in on your camp from time to time. I strongly recommend that you get used to your hotkeys, and that's one of the first things that you should do is open up the options menu, head into your hotkeys, and make sure that the things that you use the most are in comfortable keys that you are going to be using. Right off the bat, you have things like C for stealth, and you have V for shove, and Z for jump. But you can set other hotkeys for other things, like for example, Shift C, making your entire party go into stealth when you're out of combat. One of the most important hotkeys is Tactical View. Tactical View zooms out the camera and puts it completely top down. Now you might think this isn't that useful, but the truth is it's incredibly useful. A lot of the arenas in the game are very vertical. And if you do not take advantage of tactical view, you might spend a lot of time looking for strange angles to maybe teleport up somewhere or find the ideal position for a jump. In this example that you have on screen, yes, I could teleport to this little ledge here, but look at all of the other options that I can see to teleport to 
just by pressing O and entering tactical view. Now, even though I'm covering a lot of the basics here, there is a lot of information in Baldur's Gate 3. It is an incredibly dense game. There is going to be well, pretty much everything that you can expect from Dungeons and Dragons put into this game. And if you're not familiar with a lot of those things, T is your best friend. T is the hotkey for inspect, and it allows you to basically on anything, any item, any skill, whatever you can imagine, pressing T will let you inspect that and get a more detailed description of it, along with the ability to let your mouse hover over any of the words that can be highlighted in the description to get another box giving you very well written descriptions of what they are, what they mean, or how they work. Generally speaking, T or inspect will be your best friend when you are, for example, leveling up and you get different choices of spells or abilities that you can choose from and you're not sure what they're useful for or how they are going to work with others. Inspect and read up. It's also useful for examining pieces of gear that might have abilities that you aren't familiar with, other items, and just in general, you're going to get so much information that'll help you throughout the game by pressing T. Another very important part of this is pressing Alt, specifically Left Alt. Left Alt will highlight things in the environment so that you can read them much like maybe in ARPG. And this way, you can see all of the different items that are strewn about and all of the interactables on the screen so that it's easier for you to catalog everything and run over loot chests or objects that are around and you maybe didn't notice before. Quick thing, because this took me a while uh, to get sorted out when I started playing, is that you do have a key to center on a character as well as hotkeys to switch what character you have selected. I believe that the one for centering camera on character is the home key, although I did switch that out. So if you're ever frustrated because you started moving the camera around and you wanted the camera to just follow your character, set that hotkey quickly because you're going to use it a lot. At least I do. Finally, the most important tip I'm saving here for last is turn based mode when you are not in combat. By default, this is done by pressing shift plus space. The game, the tutorial tips themselves, recommend that you use this for things like stealth and getting around traps, but you can also use this to set up ambushes, for example. Going into turn-based mode freezes time, so if you can position yourself in such a way that you are maybe behind a character that you want to pickpocket or close to an object that you want to steal from but you want to be out of line of sight, and then you go into turn-based mode and execute the action, the moment that you go into turn-based, everything freezes, so there's no chance of anybody turning around and spotting you while this happens. Same thing goes for environmental effects and traps going off, because since time is frozen, you can simply slowly jump over it or move around it with all of your characters and mitigate any potential risk. It almost feels like cheating, because again, you can do this, for example, to set up ambushes. You can wait for the right moment of a patrol or certain characters walking by or get into a perfect position and simply initiate combat using the turn-based mode and that will get you a ton of benefits throughout your playthrough. Again, not cheating. This is what Larry and the developers themselves recommend in the tooltips. So take advantage of it. It's really useful. It's just consider it being extra smart and perceptive. I hope that all of these tips and tricks help you get a grasp on a lot of what the game is going to put you through when you start playing. It is truly a magnificent game and a fantastic experience, but it never hurts to go in a little bit more prepared. I wanted to also thank all of you so much for all of the support that you've been giving my videos on Baldur's Gate 3. I will have a lot of things to share and opinions to give once the game is officially out on the 3rd of August, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that, along with guides, history, tips, and tricks on all of the upcoming games of the year because it is one of the best years for gaming, no doubt, and in large part due to Baldur's Gate 3. I'm Mugthief, I hope this helped, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you on the internet.